Hi everybody, Sunshine here. Um, so I'm gonna I'm just starting some picture forms, and I, I, this is gonna be just kind of halfway. Um, but I wanted to just give you a real quick, and hopefully this angle is a good angle, um, just a real quick on how I set up and start a pitcher, uh, which is a coil built form that I make. Um, so I basically just grab a ball of clay, roughly the size I think I'm gonna need, and I'm gonna pound it down. This will be noisy, sorry. Maybe, I'll try to pound gently. But I'm just gonna slowly work this all the way around. You can do it however kind of is comfortable. I like to kind of mash it out and then I'll take a rib to it and compress it and clean it up and kind of thin it out a little bit. It's maybe not as um, thin as I want it to be, um, but it's gonna cover a good chunk of my banding wheel and it's gonna be stuck down. Um, this is, I usually start out with kind of a round footprint for my pictures and now I'm going to just cut this into a concentric circle. Looks like I have clay on my nose. Anyways, uh, so I'm going to use a needle tool. I'm going to spin my banding wheel. It's just a really, this is a, like well, actually one of my favorite tools, a Shimpo banding wheel. I'm going to spin it. I'm going to hold my hand and my needle tool, and I'm going to come down on top of this slow and steady, right? I'm not going to sort of dig my needle in there. What happens if you dig your needle in there really quick, it tends to gouge and drag. Um, so just be, just be patient with yourself. Um, I'll show you one more time. So I usually just brace my hand and my arm, and then I'm just going to gently sort of come down slow and steady. And I know that I, you know, I make that look really simple. Uh, I can't tell you how many people it is a challenge for them. So, um, just practice and you'll get better at it, I promise. And if you feel like it isn't a circle, use a compass and make a circle, whatever kind of works for you, um, just to get, get it started. So you can sort of see, it's kind of a wide circle. Um, these guys just eyeball, I don't have a template or anything that I'm thinking of with or using. I'm just gonna quickly score this bottom because I'm gonna put a coil on it. So I want to be really generous, ask, like generous with my scoring, excuse me. Um, and that means I'm gonna score the heck out of it, right? Um, you know, this is, I'm asking, I'm, I basically am creating a slab and then I'm gonna attach a coil to it. And those are two different types of clay treatment. And so the scoring is really important to make sure that those two things stay together. And, you know, I don't want it to, I don't want to build the whole picture and then the bottom falls off. That's like a drag, right? So I'm just really mindful of that. I'm going to make a coil here. And I just sort of squeeze out my coils. What a, is a comfortable kind of thickness. Um, they, it doesn't have to be overly even, but it comes fresh out of the bag. I'm going to score the heck out of this also, you guys can see. And then I'm just going to start pinching this on. Hopefully, and I kind of pinch it in a triangle shape, right? So it's tapered towards the center of the pot, and then my fingers are on the outside acting like a backstop. And I'm just attaching this to that footprint. So it's more straight up and down on the outside and more tapered on the inside, okay? So let me, I'll show you really quick how this is, like when I'm pinching it, it's more shaped like this. So if I have a little piece here. I'll just cut this in half so you can kind of see what that looks like, right? You can see a little bit up. So sort of flat on the outside, more vertical, and then taper towards the inside, okay? And that's just generally because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my rib and I'm going to really, I'm just going to clean up that inside corner a little bit. So I'm taking away a little bit of clay, but I just want to make sure that it's well attached. And now for this guy, I'm going to actually kind of taper towards the center because this is gonna immediately uh, taper in and create more of a knife's edge on that outside edge. And so I'll do that with a rib, I'll do that with my hands a little bit. Um, sorry, scrapey, scrapey. I can also use one that doesn't have a round bottom. Get a little bit less of that noise. So this is also, I've warmed up, I've actually made three of these. My goal is to make five of them today. So they're just kind of a starting point uh, for me. Uh, so tomorrow I'll come in and have uh, five pictures to finish off. Um, 
And that's, you know, t kind of, I have lots of things working. I'm still working on bowls right now. Um, you can kind of see behind me, these guys. I textured them all, but they also have to wait for, um, wait until they're ready to be trimmed. So they're just sitting out drying, which of course in the winter takes forever. Okay, so I'm just gonna taper that. Okay, you can kind of see it's a bit of a mess. Um, I'm not too worried about it. It's sort of collared in a little bit. Um, but you know, that's why I sort of address that first, that interior before I do the out, outside because um, I'm not gonna really be able to get to it again, right? But I have a little extra clay there, not a ton. And now I'm just gonna add another coil. kind of see. And so when I'm adding coils, you know, I'm using my outside fingers as a backstop and my thumb as sort of the method to which I apply the coil to the wall. Um, and that way it's like my fingers are not allowing the clay to sort of grow out. I'm creating a direction with that. You can, so when you watch me pinch, it's usually very directional and I'm making sure that I'm guiding the clay, right? Um, and I always go one coil around. I don't go more. Um, because really, if I put like three coils on there, you'd think, oh, it'll be faster. Just get all the coils on there. It's a real pain in the butt to really try to manipulate three coils tall, because that's going to be up to here. When, you know, if I just do one and add another, um, it's going to be a lot quicker if I put this on here, get it shaped correctly, and then move on to the next coil. Okay, so now I'm using this wood knife, which is another one of my tools that I um, have for sale. It's also one of my favorite ribbing tools because as you can see, this is a much smaller hole now. This is able to get in there and I can compress that seam without like gouging or you trying to fit a rib in there and my hand. Um, it's just a much easier tool for me to be able to um, get that uh, coil attached. Sorry, it's so funny. I've been like listening to podcasts all day and so I haven't been practicing talking. <laughs> so I'm a little bit flubby with my words at the moment. But Okay. So for my pictures, one of the inspirations for them, I, you know, um, just sort of a preview for the next video is that they're pretty much set up as a... Um, they're modeled after an Etruscan pitcher, um, and that's because I couldn't figure out how to pull a spout. Um, I think Elisa Helen Hansen had a great uh, video of her pulling a spout um, of a thrown pitcher, and I've always wanted to figure out how to do that, and I have never been able to do it. And so when I started researching pitchers, I ran across these Etruscan pitchers, and they had a cut spout, which was really great. I was like, I can figure that out. Um, you know, and so it was something that I just started to investigate and practice doing. And, you know, I could probably go back now and figure out how to do a pulled spout, but I really like doing my spouts that way. Um, and it's also just, you know, sometimes we just don't have the skills right away to figure something out or our touch with clay is a little bit different. And so we need to practice more until we can really um, control our hands and control our movements. And so, you know, it's not, um, everything doesn't have to be done a singular way. And that's, Part of the reason I love hand building is like you find what works for you and then do it. So anyway, so this is kind of, I always think of pictures as kind of like birds. So this is kind of right now I'm making like the duck butt bottom. Um, so this has like this broader base. This will start to flare out a little bit. And I use my banding wheel and the reason that it's attached is then I can kind of rib and shape this a little bit. But I can keep this curve. And then after I get to a certain point, I'll just cut it off. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing, I hope. And so I attach that coil and it's somewhat overlapped um, down on the interior of the wall. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm just gonna make sure that in my method of pinching on, I'm not picking my thumb up, thumb, excuse me, picking my thumb up and then uh, moving it like this. So if I have a piece of clay here and I'm not picking it up and then jumping right to the next space so I have this big indention, I'm going to do half measures so that when I'm attaching it, I have a much more smooth surface, okay? And that helps with the outside too. But I also will want to go back around and make sure that I don't have any of those big kind of 
indentions from my fingers so that when I'm ribbing, I don't catch on that, right? So I just sort of gently pinch everything down and get it to a good point. So as you can see, I kind of rib the outside with my little metal rib, and then I'm gonna rib the inside typically with my stick. Usually once I've switched, I don't typically, I don't, sorry about the pause, I don't typically go back, but I could use my uh, little rib if I wanted to, but I like the control this st little stick gives me. Okay, so I'll do another couple of coils here. And so the other thing that happens with this, I'm gonna push, get like, so this part of the form will be your weakest, right? There's gonna be more torque on this as I add another coil and add rib. And so this is more likely to twist or tear or collapse at this moment. If you have a thin spot or something like that and that especially. And so often I will just torch it a little bit. exciting <laughs> um, and so what that does is this just gets it a little bit leather hard to so that I can quickly add a couple more coils um, and then put it under plastic and let it rest for the day for to, for tomorrow okay where's my other um, I'm trying to hurry because my phone battery is gonna die here any second probably because I was listening to podcasts all day but anyways, so. And I also don't worry, so you can see this big gap, a lot of people that makes them worry. I don't worry about it too much. Everything evens out in the end. I will cut off the excess of um, that clay and make it even before I take it off my wheel head here. But I'm gonna make sure that I've got all of my attachments. And when I say attachments, so you can sort of see, look, I have a little gap here. Like I tore it a little bit. Um, because the clay is so soft still, I can just squish some more clay into that little crevice, right? So it's like, oh, I've got a little thin spot. I'm just gonna patch it with some extra clay. And then I'm gonna rib that clay into the wall. And it's just a little thin spot and I'm not too worried about it. This will like fill the gap and hopefully make it a little bit more even. And that you might think was because I torched it and it could have been, it was also just a little bit thin there. And so I would have probably come back and when I felt it go, oh, it needs a little bit more clay and squish some clay in there anyways. But that extra pressure I put on there basically just caused it to tear a little bit. So that's one of those don't panic moments again. Not a big deal, it happens. Part of it is a touch with the clay. You get used to things like that maybe occurring or go, oh, I need to work a little thicker. I still am kind of getting used to this clay for hand building. It's a newer clay body to me. I mean, it's like a new clay body and an old clay body. Um, I recently had made at the Bray um, an old recipe that they had of mine, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's brand new clay. It's only just been recently made. And so it's a little bit shorter than normal and so I'm still getting used to it a little bit. Okay, let's see if I can get one more coil on there before the phone dies. Okay. So part of my goal with adding this coil is not adding a round coil, is basically adding a sort of flat piece of wall to grow the wall, right? So I want it to lose this round shape and become part of the clay wall. And so that is part of your goal is to make that coil flat, right? So I'm, I'm sort of working with a round piece of clay, but I'm turning it into a part of the wall. So again, I'm just gonna go around Make sure I've got a good connection, not too many, any real overly thick parts. Um, and now I'm just gonna rip a little bit. And so the ribbing is a very sort of 
it's gentle and quick. And you can see I go round and round several times. I don't expect to get um, the form that I want, the attachment that I want, all in a single kind of pass. I'm gonna go around a couple times. And now I'm gonna use the rib on the inside because I kinda wanna shape it a little bit, give it a little bit more belly. So I'm gonna open it up and I just have it and I'm kind of rushing. Mm -mm. Plus I wanna go home and I got a chicken to cook. So, you know, it's, it's quitting time here in Sunshine Studio. Okay. So then I'll just kind of double check my form, make sure I'm, I've got what I'm looking for. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the excess here. And so this guy, uh, so I'm using the sunshine stick and it's gonna have like a little bit of an angle on it. So I'm just gonna hold the corner down. You can kind of see that and then lean it out because of the way that this is shaped. I'm gonna have a little bit of an odd space, but what's nice is I can come in and then just I'm kind of actually going to look where this is touching on the bottom. I'm like, okay, I need to come down one more. Give a little wiggle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be pretty even because this is going to be help me for when I'm finishing it up tomorrow. Is It's going to change direction now. So I'm coming out for the width of my picture, and then it's going to taper back in, right? Um, the next thing I'll do, last thing before I take it off the wheel, basically, is I'm going to sort of... Give it a little bit of a cut here with my wood knife and sort of roll this edge up and just gently roll that edge before I cut it off. I just want to roll it up into the pot a smidge. Right? You can kind of see that. And so that's all taken care of and I don't have to deal with it tomorrow and it won't get like really razor sharp or, or too dry. I'll just sort of pop up the bottom now. And like doing that little wood edge, I've got a little bit of a hang overhang there so I'm just going to clean it up and then I'm just going to put it to the side so thank you guys uh check out tomorrow's one where I finish up the picture have a great night bye